Oh, and now all of a sudden Joe Biden's in office and Joe Biden gets clowned on in a way that shows that he's completely out to lunch. It's, oh, oh, you're not a very good Christian, are you? I've been meaning to make a video on this for a while, but due to various constraints, I haven't been able to, so I know I'm a little late to the game, but we need to talk about the NORAD Joe Biden Let's Go Brandon clowning guy. His real name, which has become widespread at this point, and probably shouldn't have, is Jason Schmeck. He works for, apparently, his father, who owns a company called Winema or Winema Electric Incorporated, and none of that should matter. But why am I mentioning it? Because there are people who are very pissed off at this guy. And what are they doing? They're going after him and his family and anyone they can. They're trying to get the dad's business. They're trying to get that shut down. They had to take down their business website just to quell some of the social justice lunatic backlash. So they're really going after this guy. But why? Well. First of all, let's review what actually happened, and you can look this up if you want to see the actual video. It's all over the internet right now. You don't need me to give it to you. Joe Biden was doing phone-ins for kids, NORAD online, Santa Tracker, whatever, and a guy called in, and he made a YouTube video while he did it, where he says to Joe Biden near the end of the phone call, let's go Brandon. In normal phone call, and at the end he just goes, let's go Brandon. And Biden goes, yeah, I agree. Do you already see the problem here? What this guy did was show everyone that was watching, irrefutably, that Joe Biden is clueless. He's spaced out. He's just not there. He doesn't know what's going on. This is a phrase commonly used to criticize him and his administration. This is not some sort of just random out of nowhere thing. This is Joe Biden being directly criticized live on air. Now, why did the guy do it? Because one of the arguments against him has been that the guy did it because he's tasteless, he's cruel, it was childish, sophomoric, that, oh, this is just an affront to decency, and you should never treat the president this way, and so on and so forth. So why would this guy do this at this time? I mean, obviously, at the moment, he might have just been thinking, oh, this is funny. But if he didn't do this, someone was going to. Why? Because Joe Biden is sequestered. Joe Biden is rendered inaccessible to people and to scrutiny. He is a secluded president. He is prevented from anyone being able to directly query him. Why? Because we all know it is evident in his behavior that he's not quite mentally all there. There's a very high chance that the country's run by his handlers, if you will. People that are around him that tell him what to do. And he is just the mechanism by which they do it. But the people who voted for Joe Biden, the people who support him, the lunatics who support cancel culture, social justice nonsense, crazy fourth wave feminism, you get the idea. Pretty much all the toxic elements of society and even some that just simply vote default Democrat because they don't put any intellectual effort into coming up with what they do. They don't actually look at positions, look at candidates, understand what it is they're voting for, understand policies. They just put a little scratch mark beside everyone with a D and walk away. They vote straight ticket. They bail out because that's what you do, because that's what you've always done, because that's what you're supposed to do, because that's what your parents do. That's the gamut. It ranges from psychopaths on the left to just people that are completely clueless. The reason that they're angry at this guy is not because he said, let's go Brandon, which is, and I'm going to just throw the language right out there, which is seen as a synonym for fuck Joe Biden, because you can look that video up too, and I need to make a video about why that's an interesting situation. A reporter was at a NASCAR event. The crowd started shouting, fuck Joe Biden live on air. She had to cover it up, and the guy she was interviewing was named Brandon, so she's like, oh, they're saying, let's go Brandon. That's how the phrase came about. But what was fuck Joe Biden in the first place, which from now on I'll just call FJB, so as to not trip the YouTube triggers too hard. What was FJB in the first place? It was a phrase used to express dissatisfaction with the administration. 
people don't use that phrase because they hate Joe Biden personally, but rather to criticize the way that his administration is handling things. The thing that scares these leftists is that it's more and more people on the left that are joining the FJB movement, so to speak. But here's the thing. This reporter unwittingly gave everyone that had that sentiment, I am dissatisfied with the administration and what they've been doing and how they have negatively affected my life through their policy decisions. It gave those people something to say that expresses their frustration with the administration without using naughty language to do it. Yes, you know, saying FJB is pretty childish, so to speak. It's college level. In fact, it's mostly college students that started the whole thing. But let's go, Brandon. It's not offensive wording on its face. And yes, while it is a stand-in for FJB, it is not the same thing. One of the arguments made against this man saying, let's go, Brandon, to Joe Biden, has been that, well, it really means fuck Joe Biden. And, that, and you know that's what it means. And it was inappropriate to call and cuss out the president. But you see, we're already taking reality and stretching it out like silly putty here. We're already pulling at the reins of reality to get just there. This is already a leap. Because while it is a stand-in for a more obscene phrase, the expression is not the literal phrase it replaced. It is a, an expression of sentiment. It is not literally just a swap in. It's not like, gosh darn fudge dang shoot. It's not one of those bowdlerisms. Bowdlerism being where you take the offensive part out of something to lessen the offensiveness. No, it's a replacement that allows people to continue to express their frustration with the administration's terrible policies without having to say mean words in the process. So that they can say, I don't like this and what this guy's doing, but they don't have to explicitly say something horrible. But, of course, there's not really much ground to stand on here because Joe Biden agreed with the phrase when it was uttered. And... What this is going to do is pull people that are on the left over towards this new movement of people that are dissatisfied with the Biden administration. That's why they hate it. They can't stand it because now it's been revealed and it can't be denied. The problem is with people, you can go one of two ways when presented with conflicting information. You can either correct the information in your head and reconcile what you have against the new information or you can try to destroy that information or twist it to make it fit into your existing framework. The people that are going after this man, they hate him because of what he revealed about Joe Biden. All of the other stuff is just a shield, a cloak, an attempt to attack the guy without admitting that they're wrong. See, we have people who are saying that it's a drop-in for an obscene phrase, therefore it's equivalent to the phrase, therefore it's a vulgar slur which is the most stupid thing I've heard in my life. It's obviously not a vulgar slur, either on its face or in meaning. It means, I'm frustrated with what you're doing, and I really would like for you to stop. But that, that's all they have. That's the only ammunition that they have to go after this guy for revealing that the president is a moron and completely mentally out of it and completely unaware of what's going on around him. For him to agree to it, it's even worse. Now, they're going after this guy, they're going after this guy's family's business, all kinds of stuff. Now, if you want to see true comedy gold, what you need to do is go to Just a Lazy Gamer's video and look at the people doing these gymnastics, trying to pretend like this guy did something horrible. See, he's a self-declared Christian. So what these people are doing is showing up and pretending like they give two shits about Christianity, or morality, or decency, or politeness so that they can skewer Schmeck in front of the world, so they can go after him and hurt him and make him look like a bad guy. But he's not. What they're doing is spending five years prior to this going, fuck Trump, fuck Trump, fuck Trump, indiscriminately. Doesn't matter where it is, doesn't matter who it is. In fact, if it would be more rude, more obscene, more vulgar, then that's a better place for him to do it. Five years of this crap, five years. Five years we have to watch as they just hurl obscenities about Donald Trump. Where was the dignity of the office of the president then, bud? Oh, 
And now, all of a sudden, Joe Biden's in office, and Joe Biden gets clowned on in a way that shows that he's completely out to lunch. And so, oh, oh, you're not a very good Christian, are you? Because I totally care about Christian Jesus stuff now. Because I'm totally a moral person. Oh, oh, using bad language. Oh, so tasteless to do it on a phone call that was meant to make children happy on Christmas. Ooh, my pearls! I keep reaching, but I can't find my pearls to clutch! Oh, oh hey, that's actually pretty accurate for the situation, isn't it? Nope, not today. Because these people are hypocrites galore, buddy! They suck. They suck. They are lying scum. They are taking the position of being moral, polite, decent folk who care about Christianity, Christian morals, and Christian values long enough to serve their agenda. Then they're going to walk right back on out the door and continue to hurl obscenities about Orange Man bad. These people are evil. Pure evil. They stand for nothing but the agenda. Where they go with their moral pleadings depends on what serves the agenda that week. And if they have to change fundamental positions to support their agendas, guess what they do? You guessed it, they stick with it. This is what we're up against. These lunatics will pretend to be moral, pretend to care. But there's a silver lining. All you have to do is not give in. Whenever they show up and they go, we are angry with you and we condemn you and you're a bad person and we hate you and everything that you've done is horrible and we're going to yell at your family and blah, 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 blah. all you have to do is sit back and go, yeah, well, that's like your opinion, man. I don't care. And they go away. They lose interest. Give it a week or two, there will be almost none of them left. Do you think that this guy's going to be even talked about in a week or two? No. Hell no. He's not going to be even on the table. Nobody's going to care anymore because the loony leftists will move on to the next thing to shriek about, the next thing to show that they're virtuous about, the next thing that offends their sensibilities, and they'll forget this guy. So that's it. This guy, he's going to be fine. In the end, he's going to be fine. The biggest mistake that he made, really, is apologizing at all, backtracking at all, saying he didn't mean to offend anyone. Dude, you said let's go Brandon directly to the President of the United States on national live television, and the team over there taking phone calls are so incompetent that they didn't have a loop set up to where they could stop you. You have revealed that a whole bunch of people voted for stupid. Of course! Of course you meant to offend somebody, but those people are worth offending. They need to be offended so that other people can see how stupid they are and not fall in line with that. A lot of people just want to be left alone. A lot of people just want to live their lives and be done with it. But they can't if they don't fall in line. You give them a reason not to fall in line when you show, hey, this is what you're falling in line with, guys. This is what it is that you are endorsing implicitly through just not saying anything or doing anything when it comes to your doorstep. You capitulate to these lunatics. This is what you get. Of course they're angry. Because you've taken the mask off. So yes, you did set out to offend people. Wear it. Be proud of it. You did the right thing. You did something that has made you a legend, both on the internet and within the circles of reasonable people who see what a lunatic this guy is. Own it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Go to jodybruchon.com to give me money so I can keep talking to a camera and itching my eye because what on earth is going on there? And maybe I can even buy some extension cords so that I can hook this light up finally. It's just up there and not doing anything. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.